How are tires manufactured? Material preparation is the first critical step in tire manufacturing. At this stage, manufacturers carefully select each of the components needed to create the final product. This includes a variety of materials, from natural and synthetic rubber to chemical compounds, fabrics, and metals. Rubber is one of the main elements and can come from both natural sources, such as rubber trees, and synthetic sources. Each type of rubber has specific properties that affect tire performance, such as wear resistance, traction, and durability. Fabrics, such as polyester or nylon cord, are also an integral part of material preparation. These fabrics provide the structure and strength needed to withstand the forces and pressures that tires are subjected to during use. Finally, metals are selected for components such as rims and reinforcing wires, which help maintain the tire's shape and provide stability during driving. Now that the materials have been carefully selected, it is time to mix them to create the perfect formula that will give life to our tires. This process is known as compound mixing. In compound mixing, the different types of rubber, along with chemical compounds and other additives, are combined in specific proportions according to the needs of the tire being manufactured. This precise mixture is what will determine the tire's characteristics, such as strength, durability, and traction capacity. To carry out the mixing process, specialized machinery is used to homogenize the materials uniformly. These machines can include internal type mixers, such as Banbury mixers, or external type mixers, such as two-roll mixers. During mixing, the compounds are subjected to high temperatures and pressures to ensure uniform distribution of the materials and activate the vulcanization processes, which are essential for the formation of the rubber's molecular structure and its subsequent hardening. In addition to the rubber compounds, other additives, such as vulcanizing agents, antioxidants, accelerators and flame retardants, are also added to improve the rubber's properties and ensure its resistance to extreme conditions, such as high temperatures and exposure to chemicals. Once the mixing process is completed, the resulting mixture is inspected and analyzed to ensure that it meets the quality standards set by the manufacturer. Any deviation in the composition or properties of the mix can significantly affect the performance and safety of the final tire. In this stage, the previously prepared and mixed materials are transformed into the various elements that make up the tire, from the tread to the carcass and belts. The mixed rubber is fed through an extrusion machine that molds it into sheets of different thicknesses and dimensions. These sheets, known as strips, will be the basis for the creation of various parts of the tire. Reinforcing fabrics such as polyester or nylon cord, are cut and prepared for use in tire construction. These fabrics are critical in providing strength and structure to the tire, and their preparation includes precise cutting to tire design specifications and the application of chemical treatments to improve their adhesion to the rubber. The tread, the part of the tire that is in direct contact with the road, is manufactured using rubber compounds. These compounds are molded and vulcanized into the desired shape, incorporating specific tread designs to optimize performance in terms of handling, traction, and durability. The carcass and belts, which provide the tire's structure and internal strength, are constructed by placing and fusing layers of rubber sheets and reinforcing fabrics in overlapping plies. These layers are strategically arranged to evenly distribute the forces and pressures to which the tire is subjected during driving. In addition to the tread, carcass, and belts, other tire components such as inner reinforcement layers and sidewalls are manufactured. Once the carcass and belts are in place, the tread, the part of the tire that comes in direct contact with the road, is added. Once all the tire components are in place, the vulcanization phase begins. 
This process involves the application of controlled heat and pressure to the tires, which causes the materials to melt and harden. It is like the moment a dough turns into bread in the oven, the heat causes the ingredients to irreversibly bind together. During vulcanization, tires are placed in specific molds designed to shape and size the final product. These molds ensure that the tires acquire the desired shape and maintain their structural integrity. The heat applied during vulcanization activates the vulcanizing agents present in the rubber compounds leading to chemical reactions that strengthen the bonds between the rubber molecules. The pressure applied during vulcanization helps to ensure even distribution of the materials and to eliminate possible air bubbles trapped inside the tire. The vulcanization time and temperature vary according to the type of tire and materials used. Once the tires have been vulcanized and removed from the molds, they undergo a finishing process to remove any burrs or excess material that may affect their performance or appearance. The tires are visually inspected for defects and repaired or rectified as necessary. After the finishing process, the tires move on to the testing phase, where they undergo a series of extensive tests to evaluate their performance in a variety of driving conditions. These tests include endurance, durability, traction, braking and handling tests in simulated road conditions. Once the tires have been manufactured, tested and approved for use, it is time to prepare them for shipment to customers around the world. They are securely packed in containers or boxes specifically designed to protect them during transport and storage. Various packaging materials can be used, such as shrink wrap, corrugated cardboard, or foam. Once the tires are packed, they are labeled with important information, such as tire type, size, recommended pressure, and handling instructions.